This is Dolany TV, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another edition of Edmonton Oilers discussion here on the channel today. And let me tell you, it's been a well snowy day. It continues even after recording that Tyler Ennis video. The wind's just ripping. Welcome to Southern Alberta, I guess. Am I right? It is a tough go down here when that wind kicks up. However, I'm sitting here doing research projects, I guess, for myself today, and I go to good old Cap Friendly, and I see what's going on with a certain team here called the New Jersey Devils, and uh, kind of a situation the Oilers might be able to take advantage of. But first, guys, I, I always keep forgetting to ask, and I mean, it, it's a noticeable result if I do ask you to go the extra mile for me. If you're new to the channel right now, take the next 10 minutes, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's all Oilers all the time here on Dolany TV, even when we're playing NHL 21, so... Stick around if you'd like, and uh, hopefully we can work something out. So, yes, let's get back to the New Jersey Devils, shall we? A team that has potentially, out of a roster size of 23, they've got about 16 players NHL caliber on that roster outside of prospects that they may get into the lineup this season. So that would include, like, Alexander Holtz, maybe a Jesper Boquist, a Nolan Foote, a Nick Merkley, those kind of guys. So you can potentially expand that roster upwards of 1920 players, and especially once you sign Mackenzie Blackwood and Jesper Bratt as well, then all of a sudden you have added 20 player or two more players, so you're up to 22. So somewhere between 20 to 22 players, the New Jersey Devils find themselves. But even in all of that, they've got 17 point, just about two million dollars in cap space. So 17.2 million almost in cap space to work with and they still need a player or two now obviously they they can go and have their pick of whoever's available on the free agent market we're talking there's mike hoffman available carl soderberg's available Derek brassard Ilya kovalchuk Corey perry ben hutton like there are a bunch of guys available with uh with the whole UFA situation as it stands. But if you go to the all section of what's going on on Cap Friendly, yeah, you know what? They could also throw down very easily. They could throw down a offer sheet, right? And we've heard that one being thrown out there for guys on the market at this point, right? And obviously there's also Michael Granlin available. They're, they could sign a defenseman. They could go a million ways at this point. But for the Oilers, there's one guy in particular, like Athanasiu is also a guy, UFA, no qualifying offer they could go after. Um, Eric Holla, Connor Sheary, there's a ton of valuable guys that the New Jersey Devils could go after. But at what cost, right? You, you have to find out that perfect cost. And if you're the Devils, I imagine just because you've got that cap space, the price may be a little bit higher for you than it is for any other team, right? Because uh, every other team's cap tight, maybe a little bit more closer to being a contender, yada, yada, yada. Well, now you've got a situation where you're going to have to pay more for free agents, potentially. That's just me speculating. But you look at it, you can go very cheaply on the trade market and take advantage of other teams. They've already taken advantage of Columbus and gotten Ryan Murray for next to nothing, and that vastly improves their defense. That gives them a new top-line defenseman to go with P.K. Subban. That gives them a very steady Eddie pair there if uh, Ryan Murray can balance out P.K. Subban at times. And Okay, so the defense taken care of for pretty much nothing. What was it, a fifth-round pick back to Columbus? So, yeah, we're... Uh, where do we see the Oilers fitting into this picture, I guess, is the question I'm willing to ask. And the Oilers, a team looking to shed some cap space, potentially make one more move. Of course, sign Ethan Bear. That I don't even count as the one more move. The one more move is the fact that, you know what, If whether it be a PTO player, whether it be a guy coming in as a 7th, 8th defenseman depth guy, there are a couple of options the Oilers are still and have to still be looking at at this point of the offseason as we are just maybe less than two months away from the NHL season getting underway depending on what comes down the pipe tomorrow and Tuesday from the NHL and NHLPA. So in that, we kind of look at a guy who has not spent more than 
two seasons with any team, the previous past two seasons with us, the Edmonton Oilers, and Alex Chason, a guy who scored 24 points in 65 games played this year, had 38 points in 73 games the pre previous season, a guy who is an absolute power play specialist. And you look at what the New Jersey Devils are. They've got Heischer, Sajak, Palmieri, Gusev, Andres Janssen now, Miles Wood, Pavel Zaka, Jack Hughes, Michael McLeod, Jesper Bratt. Well, there's some talent on that roster up front, especially if you add Alexander Holtz and you potentially add up Jesper Boquist and a couple of guys they've got going on down in the minors or on the reserve list in Dawson Mercer as well. You could really go find a home for Alex Chieson in New Jersey, and I've been talking for the Oilers. It's, it's never going to be a pretty trade, whether you trade Jujar Kara or Alex Chieson, and especially the Devils knowing that the Oilers would be if they come calling to say, hey, Chieson's available to you, what will you give us? Ken Holland's not going not going to get anything too useful out of the Devils because, you know what, this is an opportunity for them where they have the ability to take on that cap and also know the Oilers don't have much room to really get much back other than a pick to free up that cap space. Whereas, like I said, for the Devils, when it comes to the free agent market, you got to be sitting there looking at them with their $17.2 million in cap space and realistically one or two more additions to do and only two RFAs to sign. So you go down probably to, what, 12, 11 million left in cap space for the Devils at that point. If they're willing to spend to the cap, they've got a long way to go on free agents when they only might have two to three roster spots left and they might want to give an Alexander Holtz and a Dawson Mercer two of those roster spots. So, right, is those, uh, those guys out there on the free agent market, yeah, that's... You're looking still $9 million available in New Jersey. Heck yeah, you're going to try and charge them as much as humanly possible to get them get to play for them. Not I, uh, Mike Hoffman or Derek Broussard or anyone that's really available still. I think Carl Soderberg would be interesting for them. Michael Granlin, interesting. Right? There's a lot of guys. Michael Froelich. But I guess the other question is, do you want to charge too much that you aren't going to get the contract and you won't be able to play for anybody this year? I guess that would be the other question when it comes down to it. So that's a fair counter-argument to my argument. However, right, for Alex Jason, this is almost a very guaranteed easy pickup for the New Jersey Devils should Ken Holland and the, the Devils, Tom Fitzgerald, want to make a deal, right? If they want to make a deal... You know what? Easy. The Devils have at least a pick in each of the next rounds ne next year. You throw a sixth, a fifth, a seventh at the Oilers. And if the Oilers are really looking, Ken Holland's really looking to make that deal or make that next signing that he needs to do, or if like the math comes down that they need that room for Ethan Bear, very easily you could be looking at Alex Chase on to the New Jersey Devils. That just... That seems like, I, I don't know if I'm looking at the easiest low-hanging fruit out there in the NHL right now, but I, I believe you look at the Devils roster, you look at the Devils situation, you look at the free agent market, you look who's left, you look who's available via trade. Alex Chieson, a very interesting player for the New Jersey Devils and a very interesting amount of cap space for the Oilers to free up in that $2.1 million range. That would give us about 1.8 against the cap. You get Ethan Bear in at 1.2, then the numbers game begins to find that extra 700000 to sign somebody. But you get where I'm going is it's an interesting prospect that you have to look at the Devils. Even if it's not Alex Chieson, I, I'm, I'm looking at just Alex Chieson because it makes sense. To me, you'd be able to free up the most cap space by moving him. You'd be able to get maybe a 6th or 5th round pick back for him. If not, you're getting a 7th round pick from the Arizona Coyotes, from the New Jersey Devils. And realistically, right, that's not too bad. Is If you free up that cap space, you sign Ethan Bear, and you're able to find somebody else out there in the free agent market, you've done not too bad. And plus, if you heard uh, everything buzzing around Twitter this weekend, is Oscar Clefbaum's looking to be out the entire year. You've got all that LTIR money. Hey, you know what? Moving Alex Chase on is huge. And that does free up the Oilers kind of situation on the right wing where we've got quite a laundry list now. You've got Josh Archibald needing a spot. You've got James Neal. You've got Zach Kazian. 
You've got Yes Puliarvi, you've got Zach Kazian, I think I already mentioned him. Kyler Yamamoto, right? There's a lot of guys on that right side. And Alex Chase on day by day in this offseason, he seems to be losing a roster spot. So it would make sense to me. You know what? If you can dump him in New Jersey, it's a good fit for him in New Jersey. It's a good fit for the Oilers to get something back for Chase on. And uh, you know what? For the Devils, it adds experience. The other argument here you could use for sending Alex Chase on to New Jersey and for New Jersey accepting him. Right now, New Jersey, outside of Travis Zajac, does not have another forward over the age of 30. That's a pure written fact, is even if they sign Holtz or bring in Boquist or anyone, they do not have a forward over the age of 30 outside of Travis Zajac. So that would be a huge get just for the leadership aspect of that team to get a guy like Alex Jason added, especially a guy who's revived his career and become a key member of the Oilers' power play, a key member of the Oilers' top six two years ago, a key member of the Oilers' bottom six this past year, or wherever you see Chase on fitting in, he's been a key member because on the Oilers, when you score 38 and whatever points he did, what, 22 last season, that's a lot of points that uh, the Oilers realistically don't get from anyone else, so you have to get them from somewhere. So guys, that is what I'm telling you, is it's a possibility and it's something the Oilers need to look at. And Ken Holland, I'm sure, knowing the job he's done this offseason, has looked at that situation. So guys, I'm Tyson, this is Dolany TV. Thank you so much for tuning in to the second edition of Dolany TV today here on Sunday. Snowy Sunday. My whole one side of my windows completely frosted over and now snow covered. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to wintertime in Alberta. I am up on out of here.